Today, we're looking at a Purple Ink by Pelican, their 4001 Violet. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that if you are in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Pierre Cardin President with a medium nib. I wrote with it for a day, then used it to take the notes for this video. In order to standardize some of my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper for all of the inks. I do use other papers, and some of those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer a lot of shading throughout. Extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. Again, a ton of shading throughout this. It's, I think, the most shading I've seen the 4001 inks have. It's very nice, four seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine does show the color variation that we get. The medium shows none, and we got none. Tomoy River. No bleeding. Normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread. It has halo the entire way through, and no sheen, and only a couple spots that are tiny bit darker, but really it's got halo the whole way through, a very nice. Extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 27 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation and there is none. And Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading. It's very casual about how it does it. Look it over. It starts much lighter and it works its way super slow to getting dark. Same happens with quick. Very nice. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the Extra Fine shows a ton of color variation and we are getting it. The medium shows none and we got none. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this is a very straightforward mix. This is a very nice blue that pushes its way up. On the very bottom, it almost looks like there's a little bit of a turquoise before the blue. And when it moves up, instead of going mixing with a red to get this purple, they mixed with a magenta. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And a lot of that blue stayed down. Covering up was the turquoise that we saw in the first chromatography. The purple is still pushing its way, or sorry, the blue is still pushing its way a little up, but not too far. And that magenta, still very much on the top. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I don't know. The capital H had certain parts that got entirely lost, but the majority of it's perfectly good. I probably don't use it just over that little bit of loss Again, I'm very risk averse when it comes to my notes, but that's a dealer's choice. Water is reactivating and lifting this ink off the page, but it's leaving a lot of ink behind. Now, pen flush is lifting a lot more and it's really starting to break this ink up. I only had to use water to get this out of my pen. 
One third bleach solution is completely removing it from the page, but again, I only needed water. I test ink viscosity or flow by using a tilt test, and I've linked that video and put that in here for you. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Pelican 4001's Violet has a viscosity of 2.77, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Pelican 4001's Violet has an average dry time of 14 seconds, still making it normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Pelican's 4001 Violet, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. And I wanted a nice brown and chose Krishna's Oak. Because apparently, I have... No. Looking back the last few days, and okay, I know browns have come up quite a bit lately. The second writing sample is done on Limon, Strathmore Writing, and Vinta Paper. Here we're looking at Limon paper, which doesn't always do really well with inks, and it didn't here. It had a ton of bleed through. It didn't touch the page underneath. You can't use the back of this page. It meant there was a lot of show through that was a result of it. The 1.1 has a ton of spread feather. It's gross. It's really, really bad. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Extra fine. Not too, too bad. It's darker than the stub. Uh, there's tiny feathering all over it, so again, it's better than the stub. No uh, spread, or sorry, the, it's spread from about an extra fine to about a uh, medium. <laughs> no halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. This was really not a good paper for this ink. Medium is darker than the extra fine. Medium has feathering all over it. Same tiny feathers that we got with the extra fine. It spread from a medium to about a broad. It had no halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both have no color variation, and there's none in the writing. Don't use that paper with that ink. Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and eight seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine is showing us some color variation left to right, although we didn't get it. The medium shows none, and we got none. And last up is Vinta Notebooks, because this has done remarkably well a bunch of times. And on note that... There's no real bleeding. There is some show through when it comes to the medium. It is not horrible. I don't count the scrubby area. This did really well when it comes to a pocket notebook. Just don't use a gusher broad or you're really going to have a problem. Now the 1.1 had no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Extra fine was slightly darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and three seconds to dry. Medium was quite a bit darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Still, both good times for a walk-around pocket notebook. Extra fine shows plenty of color variation, although we got none. Medium showed none, and we got none. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Pelican 4001's Violet? This is a great tone of purple. Now, while it doesn't shade a whole lot, if I was to be making top 10 lists of different colors that I really like, the bi-color top 10, this would definitely be on that list. I just don't make those kinds of lists. This is a very enjoyable ink to use that's very well behaved. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience from this ink? I didn't care for it out of dry pens, but I did find that wet pens, especially wet mediums and wet broads, really made the tone exactly what I'm looking for. If you've enjoyed this video, remember, I like thumbs up, you like thumbs up, everybody likes thumbs up. Unless you didn't like it, then give me the thumbs down. Both are good. Thanks for watching.